folks. So let's take a peek in the programming assignments. And this is a tutorial for the fifth programming assignment, which is the artificial intelligence. And it says open up project five. So let me go over here and I do need to upgrade and continue. And it's just gonna do um, some small maintenance things. So I'm gonna open up level one. And while I'm at it, I know that I'm gonna have to um, look at both the hero and also the enemy. So I'm gonna open up both of those as well. So let me try testing the game just to see where we're at. All right, and it looks like I can move up, down, left, right. And it doesn't look like the enemy moves. And it also doesn't look like there's much happening with the enemy. Okay, so that's where we're at. Let's look at the next step, run the game. You'll see our hero can move in an enemy that does nothing. Open up the actor called enemy, make it so that he will kill the player upon contact. So we're gonna probably need to use a, a collision event there and then run the game. So let me open up the enemy, and all this is going to happen in in the events. Uh, all right, so let's add an event, and we'll do a collision. Uh, now it's not going to be something else because I think we actually want to collide with um, actor of a type. So win self because we're we're in the enemy framework right now, um, and we'll choose hero. So the first actor is self, and the actor of type is the hero. Let's just say it's going to kill. And that's going to be underneath the properties tag. So we're going to kill. Uh, not kill self. If you leave it as kill self, then the bad guy will die whenever we run into them. So kill actor of type. So I'm going to uh, be a good little programmer and test the code so far. All right, so if all goes well according to plan, as soon as we touch this person, this bad guy I should die all right so we've gotten the first task done the first task was um, to add an enemy and make the collision event so that the the hero dies so now comes the hard part follow leader make it so the enemy will constantly follow the hero so we're gonna use the push towards X direction Y direction block and tell it to push sharply at five force so push sharply means um, kind of with intention because you can also push gently. Uh, which inf What information you need to calculate this? You'll need to know the hero's position and the enemy's position. So right there, before we even do anything, um, we're going to need to create a mechanism to capture the hero's position because there, there isn't anything right now. We, we've got nothing right here. So I'm going to figure out how to report where the hero is uh, all the time. All right, so let's uh, figure this out. Let's see, we're gonna need probably a game attribute. Um, and right now, we, we don't have anything for where the player X is and when, when where the player is, so we're gonna create them. So I'm gonna create a new game attribute, and I'm just gonna call it player X position. And it's okay if it starts at zero. And then also create the new game attribute player Y position. So now we can actually, um, we have a place to store where the player is in their X coordinate and their Y coordinate, but we do need a, re a mechanism to report that. So we're gonna have to add an event. Let's do that when updating. And when we're updating, let's set, and, and again, the update happens all the time. It constantly is happening. So we always wanna be changing the X position and the Y position. So we're going to change it to B. Let's see. Let's set the X position to B. Ooh. Oh, let's set the Y position since that's where we are to be the Y of self. And we'll move this over. So this X position will be X of self. So all this is doing, and again, when updating constantly happens, then the player X position, which is the the value, the X value of where the uh, hero is, will be updated, and the Y value will be updated. And we use self because we're talking about the hero. So we've 
we've reported the X and Y characteristics, but we don't, we haven't moved, we haven't created a movement for the enemy yet. Okay, so here's the complicated part, the actual movement. And I, I could play right now, but we haven't done anything to make the enemy move yet. All we've done is the game now has a notion of where the hero is. So on the enemy, we're going to have to do an update here as well. So we're going to add an event, and it's going to be when updating. All right, so fasten your seatbelt. It's, it's going to get a little rocky in here. Um, first of all, we're going to need to have an if statement and an otherwise. So we're essentially going to be um, coming up with some condition where we'll be the enemy, which is where we are right now, will be heading towards the good guy. Um, and the reason we have an if statement is because, uh, spoiler alert, down the road, it's going to have the bad guy changing from orange to blue, and the, the behavior will change based on that. So that's why we have this if block, because I, I kind of read ahead and knew that there's going to be this state switching thing. Um, and I also know that there's a property called follow and one called avoid. So blue is when the enemy is going to avoid the good guy, the hero, and this orange is when the, the enemy is going to um, look for the, the hero. So I'm going to go back to events. And we're going to use this block right here. If something equals follow. So let's see if the current animation for the self, um, let's see if we can do that. Okay, and that's gonna be under the draw menu. So if the current animation, just drop that in there, for self is follow. And again, the follow would be um, this orange. So this is when we're in attack mode, if you will. If the current animation for the enemy, which is self, is follow. Then we want to we want to move towards the, um, the, the good guy. We want to move towards the good guy. So to do this, we're going to use. Uh, and if you recall, it said something about using this push towards x dir y dir. Um, so that's probably under motion. Oh yeah. Now, the reason we have a few of these, and you don't need to know this, but this is because we can say we can do it in degrees or in relative position. So uh, this is going to get a little sloppy. I'm going to leave it outside of the if block right now just so we have some real estate. But we don't want to push gently. We want to push sharpie. And we also know that we want to do it at a force of five. And again, all that information was from uh, the, the hint right there. But here's where it gets tricky. So we don't want to point towards an X direction and a Y direction necessarily because that's going to be changing. So if you have the enemy just kind of sitting in the corner down here, actually, let's say this garbage can is the enemy. If you have the enemy sitting here and the good guy is moving, maybe kind of along this pathway right here, then the enemy shouldn't be moving towards just one point. It should always be moving towards the direction of wherever instantaneously the good guy is. So to do that, you need to subtract. So we're going to subtract wherever player X is. I'm sorry, wherever the, the X position of player is. So this is the X direction of player one. And we're going to subtract the, the actual current position of where the bad guy is right now. So that's x of self. In the y direction, we're going to do the same thing. So we're subtracting the x position of the good guy from the exposition of the bad guy. And that's gonna be the direction we turn towards. We're gonna do the same thing for the Y. So I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Oh, I guess I can't do that. 
So the y direction, and again, we're just gonna have to go over here and we're gonna be subtracting those two. It's gonna be a little bit different uh, because we're using now the game attribute for player y. I'm sorry, the y attribute of the, um, the y attribute of the, the hero. And again, we're gonna do position. Let's make sure that that's y. So we have x, x, y, y. Let's um so let me test that right now. Okay, and indeed no matter where I go, the hero is always in danger because the enemy is chasing. So since we're here, let's do this otherwise condition. And in fact, that, that wouldn't have been bad um, programmatically because, e because even though we, we can put code here, we'll never execute because currently in the game, this will always be followed because we never give it an opportunity to change. So let's see, we're gonna do basically the same exact thing. So the motion will be, we're gonna push I'll just build it right in here. Self sharply, and that's going to be a force of five. And if you want to make it like a, a challenging game, then you could probably change that force. Um, play around with it, increase it, decrease it, see what happens. And in this case, we're running away, so we're doing the opposite. So the subtraction actually has to be the complete opposite. And we want to subtract it from player X position. And again, remember this is a good opportunity to talk about player X. Player X came into being this this purple block because we said we need a way to know the game needs to know where the hero is at any given time with player X and player Y. And we linked that up, if you will, by in the hero every update, which happens I don't know thirty two times a second or something like that. Um, every update, player X has updated the X coordinate of self. So I'm going to go back to the enemy right here. And we're going to do the same thing for y. We're going to subtract the current y position of self. And we're going to subtract it from it, player one's y position. OK. So I could run this and test it, but there's no way that we'd get feedback because this will always be in follow mode. We have, there, there's not an update here to make the, the bad guy turn into a void. Um, so so let's uh, come up with a way to, to change the mode of the the bad guy, so the, the, of the enemy. And we, we can do it a, a few different ways. If we wanted to, maybe we do it when it hits the wall. It will always change from void to a follow. Um, but let's do it every five seconds because I think that's really what we were supposed to do. Um, so let's see, state switching. Our enemy is a bit boring. Oh, every 10 seconds. Let's change it to five just for testing. I guess we can do it for 10 in the game, but let's change it for five because 10 seconds is an eternity when you're playing a game. All right, so we're going to add one more event because the problem with events is there's not really a timer. There's nothing that says every five seconds do this. Um, in, in these events, what we actually need to do is add a specific event for that under time, and we can say every... Um, after n seconds or every n seconds. So after would mean you wait five seconds and then you act once, whereas every n seconds, every five seconds, you can change behavior. So let's do that. Let's um, let's have this change. So let's see, do every five seconds. Um, and this is a, a pretty famous computer programming trick right here. You're, you're just gonna kind of change the position if the current animation for self, I'm, not, I'm on the enemy, so I can go to actors um, and go to draw. If the current animation for self equals follow, then we want to switch the animation to avoid. Uh, it should probably go up there. So we want to switch the animation to avoid. Otherwise, 
So there's, there's really two cases here. If we're in follow, after five seconds, we want to switch to avoid. Otherwise, if five more seconds have elapsed and we weren't at follow, then we want to switch the animation to follow. All right, so I just want to look at this real quick and make sure I have my color straight. So follow is orange, avoid is blue. So we, we've actually made a few different events right now. Let's um, let's test this and see what happens. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Okay, I was off a little bit. Now I was running away. Three Mississippi, five Mississippi. All right, now he's orange. He's charging at me. Um, now we haven't done anything. Oh man, we haven't done anything that says when it's running away then it can be killed by me. We, we haven't done anything like that, and, and this assignment actually doesn't have us doing anything like that. So the state switching, is, that's all we needed to do. So that's the entire tutorial. Uh, that's how you, uh, let me just recap this. So under hero, we just updated. We created these uh, attributes, um, the X position and the Y position, and we constantly are updating the X and the Y position, we're reporting it to the main game, and then the enemy we actually did three times, uh, three different actions. One action, one event was, hey, if if we hit a hero, then kill that hero. The second one was we updated. Um, in in all the updates, we said, listen, if we're in follow mode, then we're gonna run towards a difference of the good guy's position and my position, and the difference of the good guy's Y position and my current position, with a force of Five. And again, you can uh, dork around with that and play with it. Otherwise, we're going to run away, and we run ran away by kind of reversing the position um, of the player X position and, and self X position. And then the last thing is every five seconds we went we switched the current animation. And that's all there is to it.